Acro Critique video number five, this time with Paul Miko flying at Great Lakes down in Southern California. He's going to fly the 2019 IAC Sportsman Known. Had a couple questions about the channel, and uh, these are videos people send to me. They just send them to me, ask me to help them out. I give them critique. You're welcome to send me a video, any video you like if you're flying. I'll be happy to help you out. A uh, couple questions about my setup here. People ask about my guitars and music equipment. I can go through that sometime, not this time, but uh, another time. And um, a couple questions about my style of doing this. This is a very low production situation here. Most of the time I haven't seen the video. Maybe I pan through it a little bit, but I don't know what's in the video. I'm responding to it live. And uh, people have asked, well, why didn't you comment about this? You know, or why don't you see this? Well, it's because I'm watching it for the first time. A couple things to think about. One is I'm not going to be nitpicky of every little tiny thing I see as a critiquer. I don't ever tell everybody every little thing. It's too much to me, unless I think they're flying at a really, really high level and they need all the detail they can get. And uh, another reason is it's a little boring if I repeat myself. So sometimes I try and isolate one thing and talk about it with one video. And then also, sometimes I make mistakes of just not noticing things that you might notice. And what would be really nice for everybody, if you see something that I missed, just go ahead and throw it in the comment. It won't hurt my feelings. It certainly won't hurt the pilot's feelings. It's better for everybody. So please, by all means, make a comment if you notice something that I didn't notice. Maybe I'll pick up uh, on it, and then I'll use it for another video in the future. Okay, let's go on to Paul Miko. Paul's flying the Great Lakes. I've flown with Paul quite a bit. In fact, I flew this airplane. It was a lot of fun. Paul has a really cool plane. I had not flown a Great Lakes before, and I believe this was... Um, must have been the fall contest here in uh, Borrego, California. We had, I believe it was five, it might have been six Great Lakes at the contest. It's an amazing situation. You just don't see these airplanes very often. They're very capable airplanes. They don't have a lot of energy retention. They're very draggy, not a lot of horsepower, but they can perform all the aerobatics that you really want to do. In fact, one of the guys down there, his name is Howard Kirker. He flies his in intermediate and he does this free program with outside snaps and it's just a very interesting and fun thing to watch i really enjoy the airplane great flying plane if you ever get a chance lands like a dream and paul's a good guy he teaches down there and several of his students fly in that airplane so this is gonna be fun for me to watch paul he does a good job and uh, i enjoy flying with him i have some things i think i can help him with let's see how it looks in the video let's all take a look together okay So here we go, we're gonna have some wags in. And looking at that, that looks pretty good. Though I could say right there, we can already see that there's probably some room to make those a little crisper. It's hard in the Great Lakes, okay? And I I can't say that anyone had that camera angle on me. I don't know what we'd see if they, if they did. But I can see in the wags a little bit of nose swing. We can see the wing moving side to side as the roll is initiated. And it doesn't look like the, the wag is um, is uh, perfect. So that's just something to think about right here. We'll watch the wing. Yeah, I see a little bit of, of uh, stutter at the end of the wag. Okay, pulling level. And now we're going to do loop. Let's see if we have the float we need. Good pull at the very beginning. And a little more float here already. Just a little bit more. I can see it. And then that's a little too quick in the third quarter. Okay. And then the bottom of the loop looks pretty good. So in order for a loop to look round, there has to be a really tight pull at the bottom. Should be a, a jolt, a jerk into the pull. And then when we get to the top, we have to have a considerable amount of float in an airplane like this. And the way that would work mathematically is, in, in an airplane like my extra, if I'm going 200 knots and I pull really hard on the stick, I will do a loop and the ratio between my speed at the bottom of the loop and the top of the loop, right, is not very, it's not very big. There's not a big difference between the two as a proportion. The top of the loop is, is almost as fast as the bottom. If I do it fast enough, maybe not almost as fast, but it's pretty fast. Whereas if I'm coming in already very slow in an airplane that can't really pull itself through the loop, then my ratio of airspeed might be quite a bit different. It could be that I have 50% the airspeed on top as I had in the bottom instead of 75%. And just mathematically, that means we need more float. That's, that's why we have to float so much in a slow airplane or in a big loop versus a fast airplane or a small loop that's performed with a lot of G's at the bottom. Okay, so that's that's what's going on there. And I would say, just from looking at it, it looks like we need a little more float. And in the third chord, it's very easy as you come over, over the top to tuck the airplane in and pull a little too hard too quickly. And that's just what I see here. So that's my first observation on this figure. Let's just watch it again here. And I would say right here, float, float, a little more float, more float, more float. And there where it's quickening, I keep a little bit more float in for a little longer. 
it looks like it's the, the pull slows down a little bit at the end here too. I like how you're keeping the nose down there. A little more space between the loop and the and the uh, hammerhead would be good. Figure two is a hammerhead. Pull vertical. Vertical looks good. Don't anticipate the kick. Kick when it's time. And now you're slightly negative down. So make sure you're watching as you're performing your hammerhead. You're looking out the left wing at the horizon, making sure you're perpendicular to the horizon. As we kick the rudder and come over the, the top, we want to take our gaze, move it from the left wing through the nose of the airplane as it passes through the horizon, and then even follow it a little bit farther and then let your eyes droop from the right side of the airplane slightly down to the line. And what we're doing is we're watching the wing to make sure it carves a line and then we're following that line with our eyes as we point nose down to make sure that the plane is vertical down. That's the right technique for your eyes. So let's go back and look at your eyes as we watch your figure. Because it's so helpful to see. Okay, I see you definitely looking at the left. I see your head swinging. And um, I, I mean, I think your head can move a little bit more to the right, but it's it looks pretty good. That's the kind of idea we have. Now we're going to pull level. Figure three is going to be an Immelman, which is a half loop with a half roll. An Immelman, okay. Spacing's hard to tell here, but obviously we want to put this at the end of the box on the downwind side. Half loop looks good. No real complaints there. It looks like a good figure. Now we're going to push down to a 45. Good, smart push. That's what you want. Could be a little steeper. Looks like it could be a little steeper. And now we're, have, we're going to be pulling a 5 8 loop to a half roll on top. It's an interesting camera angle. It's a little hard to see some of the things this camera angle. Yeah, you're a little slow there. So on that, I would say steeper line. Get yourself to your V and E speed, probably in the Great Lakes. You should be at V and E, and then pull very briskly and keep the pull in. Don't try and float this one. Just keep the pull going all the way up to the top, and then stick it and roll. Keep the nose a little high. Stick it and roll. Actually, you could even pull the nose through the horizon to to a slight inverted angle if you need to for your airspeed. If that helps you, you can do that. That might be a solution for you. And in a, a plane like the Great Lakes. You kind of have to play with it and figure out what works the best. What works for my plane will not work for your plane. But those are some thoughts for you right there. Okay, next figure is going to be a 180 degree turn. And if you watch my past videos, you'll know that I would like to see that, that bank angle established. And I, I'd like to see a one potato, two potato count before the pull. And, and I can see from this video that you're rushing it. And I know from uh, flying the plane that it's hard to do um, a, a nice axial roll. But it can be done. The Great Lakes can do it. There's no reason why it can't be done. It just takes practice. So I would argue that you should hit that bank angle and stick it and watch the nose and make sure you do not let it pull through that point. Look straight ahead over the nose as you're in your knife edge position and hold it, lock it in for a couple of seconds and then pull, initiate a pull with a, with a, a quick movement of the stick backwards. Let's watch this again. And you can see, in fact, if we watch it again, you can see the nose is already drifting immediately after the roll. So this is the tell that we do not have enough down elevator in to support um, the knife edge position and the plane is starting to drift. And I would argue that you are not deciding to pull into your turn. You are establishing the bank angle and then as a victim, recognizing the plane is beginning to pull that way, you are assisting it. We don't want to be a victim. We want to roll it and stick it and hold it and then pull. Let's watch it one more time. Roll it and the swing happens, then we pull. Okay, 180 degree turn. Otherwise, this looks like a good 180 degree turn, of course. And now we want to stick it. And that's that's a very soft stop. We want a very firm stop. We want to hit that angle and pop it and stop it. Okay. And I was going to show that again, but I think I missed it, so that's fine. Let's go on with the roll. Again, very hard to tell. This is an interesting angle, but it's very hard to tell from this angle if the roll looks correct, what I'd be looking for from this angle is if the wing is shifting relative to the horizon in yaw before the roll or after the roll begins. And I'd be looking to see if you have enough support in the down elevator portion. But it's just very hard to tell. Just keep working on your rolls. I suspect that because of what I saw in the 180 degree turn, that possibly uh, this roll would have not looked quite axial because it would be the same technique that we need. All right, let's continue on. Figure 7 is the split S, which is a half roll and then a pull half loop down. Okay, he's worried about his airspeed here. Makes sense. A very speed limited airplane. I like how I can see the gear flex up and down as you're doing all this. 
Yeah, that looks good. In a plane like this, you can consider the half roll, stick it, and then a little float down and then pull. It just might look a little a little better. It's hard to tell from this vantage point. Figure eight is a wedge. So it'll be pull vertical and then a half roll and a 45 down. Vertical looks a little bit negative. Not a lot of upline. I don't know what your plane can do, but if you can do a little, a little tiny bit more, that'd be better. And I want to look at the pull through here. We're going to look at that again. So pull vertical. Okay, I'm going to say that the reason that line up is so short is because during your pull, you're you're not continuing the pull until you hit the vertical. You're actually relaxing the pull. And because of that, you're losing altitude and energy that could be used to show a nice crisp line. That G that you add, the stick pressure needs to be added and maintained until you reach your position. And then the stick needs to be popped forward. It's not okay, it's not best to ease the stick forward and soften the connection between the radius and the line. So if we watch that again, I think we'll see that that's what happens. The rotation rate's continuous, and then right there just kind of slows down a little bit. It'd be much better just to keep that rotation rate going and just lock it right on that vertical line. Okay, now for the pull over the top, what I'm looking for is that as we leave the line and we pop the nose to start the radius, that we keep the radius going and then basically pop the nose back to a line. We don't want to have a soft connection into that line because if we do, the plane looks like it's falling and it hitting the line. It doesn't look like the radius is constant. It needs to be a pop, a little bit of kind of almost a float, and then boom, pull to the line. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, and again, I just feel like you're softening as you get near the line. You want to make sure you hit your line. You're too worried about hitting the line. Don't worry about it so much. Pull it and get the technique down of pulling it and sticking the line. Don't worry so much about the absolute angle. Just worry about the technique of sticking and then move on. Okay, now we have our half roll in the 45 down. I feel like that got a little shallow. It's a little short after, but otherwise that's not too bad. Now figure nine is a Humpty. Pull vertical. A little bit of rudder motion going on your poles. Uh, another pole where I feel like you could have had a little bit longer line up. I think you might have closed a little low there. Your little negative down looks like. These are minor errors. Just want to call your attention to them. On that on that pull as well, that pull back to level, it's not too bad. But when you pull back to level, again, you're easing a little bit as you get close to level. And what we want is to hit the pull and stay on the pull and stop the pull. We do not want to hit, hit the pull softly and then get to level and at level or let's say within 10 degrees level, start easing into level flight. It just doesn't look as pretty and it takes up space. It takes up space and loses energy. It's much better just to do it very crisply. You'll see that theme in all the videos that I go through, that that's a, that's a real um, problem that people have as they're moving up and as they're getting ready to move up to like intermediate in particular. Intermediate advance is where this stuff needs to get really sorted out. By the time you're flying advanced, if you want to fly at a high level, you simply have to have this situated. But at the lower categories, it's very common that people aren't aware of these things. And they might think they're, they're making a really sharp corner because of the maximum G that they feel during the pull. But if that G is not immediately brought on and removed, it doesn't look crisp. It looks like the radius changed from a big radius to a small radius to a big radius again. And that doesn't look crisp. It's popping on and off the line. That's the most important thing. Okay, continuing on now, figure 10 is a half Cuban. And this will be very similar to really just a loop until you get pretty close to the 45 down, which I think that looks pretty good. And now we have our half roll. Good, and then short after again, a little short after. This, it's, it's a good flight. It's, it's, uh, it's, as, you, as you know, Paul, and I, I, you know, I've, I've watched you fly a number of times. You fly well, it's a good, it's a good flight. Um, there's these little things that are peppered throughout that can be fixed and will make it go, you know, it'll give, give you 4 or 5% maybe. It's a big difference. Uh, just little tiny things, really not taking any more effort or um, a, a stronger physiology or even a lot more practice time. It's about hitting those things every single time, and that's going to make your flying scores improve. So 
Very, very glad to work with you, Paul, and enjoyed watching your flight. I love your airplane. Again, if you haven't had a chance to fly one, everybody out there, please go fly Great Lakes. They're a lot of fun. Thanks so much for stopping by. Please send me your videos. Give me your comments. Make a comment here. Share, like, all the stuff that you do out there. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.